Hi everyone, Deep Thinny Breath Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Haley Williams album, Pedals for Armor. This is the debut full-length album of singer and songwriter Haley Williams. This LP is essentially one of those sink or swim moments in an artist's career, where they are primarily known for fronting a pretty popular band, and then they suddenly decide to break off and start doing their own solo stuff. That artist is Haley Williams, the band, Paramore, who had already actually undergone some pretty radical changes on their last full-length LP, After Laughter, making a quick break from the emo-tinged pop-punk and alternative rock that informed their most defining records, and then swapping that out for the sounds of synth-pop and new wave, alternative dance. But Haley's new album sounds even more far removed from all of that, since the track list is mostly made up of these very moody art rock and art pop songs, some tracks that have a new wave flair as well, but are a bit edgier. This project was also released in different EP-sized chunks throughout the year up until this point, so the end result was an album that uh, is, is sequenced in like three different intervals, 15 tracks. There are some slight and gradual differences in style across each EP. Though, as many of the teasers did forecast for this project, uh, a lot of songs here really, to me, just read as subpar Radiohead worship. Like, for example, Roses, Lotus, Violet, Iris. The groovy drums, the clunky bits of bass and cinematic strings all, to me, read like something Tom, Johnny, and the boys would draw up in the studio. Like at some point between In Rainbows and King of Limbs, that, that specific area. Simmer, Leave It Alone, My Friend. There are multiple tracks on here that to me just sound like they are coming straight out of that Radiohead era, instrumentally anyway. And it would be one thing if I felt like Williams and her primary producer on the record, Taylor York, uh, were putting a spin on this sound outside of maybe just giving it more of a pop appeal. But uh, they don't. Mind you, none of these tracks are terrible or absolute trash and totally unlistenable. Simmer might have the best hook out of all of them, but what made these tracks so underwhelming is that they just run like pale homages to a band they obviously have a lot of admiration for. And believe it or not, these are not the only songs or the only style that uh, Haley and Taylor try to copy very weakly. The song Sudden Desire, with its explosive choruses of growling synth bass and over-the-top vocals, just sounds like something out of uh, Bjork's discography from the post or the homogenic era. Sudden Desire! What catches me off guard even more, though, is when Haley and Taylor are working into these tracks completely garish ideas in an attempt to make them sound left field or weirder than they actually are. Like the horrendous and mutant vocals on Cinnamon. Is this supposed to be uh, pleasurable to the, the ear? The stop-start beats, the funky bass, the stark verses, as well as the <laughs> Yeah, I, I do not know what these lead vocals are that are uh, really doubled up and uh, absolutely hideous. Now, granted, I do kind of like the new wave grooves and vulnerable vocals on Creepin', but I don't really know if I am attracted to that track because the, the, the first leg of this record is particularly rough. Honestly, I don't really love a song on this record until we reach the track Dead Horse. And while the tune on this one is good, really sharp hook as well. The more I listen to it, the more the dance beats and glistening synths on the chorus remind me of something I could have heard on After Laughter. But as I was talking about earlier with some of the more new wave cuts on this record, a bit edgier this time around. In a way though, that is exactly when the record really begins to pick up, at least a little bit for me, when the songs that have more of a new wave influence start to creep in. Over Yet is another example of a track with a sharp song, stronger groove, and a hook that runs like a an 80s pop anthem. What I didn't expect, though, is for tracks with this sound to pretty much dominate the last third of the record, but still the track Pure Love is a nice and bright punchy piece of sensual new wave with a slight R&B twist. I'm actually kind of impressed with Haley's vocal transition on this track. I didn't know she could pull this style of song off so well, especially when she digs into her lower register and she's just belting out these husky notes with a lot of presence. If I want pure love, 
Yeah, I can't really deny that even though I like the song, I enjoy the hook, I enjoy the vocal performance, when I break down the instrumental, uh, while I do prefer this style on this side of the record to the more art pop and art rock cuts, I, 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 uh, it's, it's still pretty derivative. Meanwhile, the track Taken has one of the more unique combinations of sounds and influences on it. Uh, the rhythms and the chord progression is a little Latin, there are some jazzy embellishments as well, and then there is uh, <laughs> some of the tight rhythms and vocal lines that uh, Haley is pulling off that seem a little, I guess, Michael Jackson influenced. I'm taken. It's an odd fusion of, of ideas and styles, but it actually kind of works. We also get a funny alt dance number with Sugar on the Rim, which sounds like the soundtrack to a small, smoky underground club where you have a bunch of people wearing outlandish outfits and just voguing. I mean, I'd go there, though I can't imagine that there are tracks in existence that would make this particular dance floor go a lot harder. Again, while I think this section of the album has more of a pulse to it, I, I, I still can't say it's terribly original, and I'm not that much more enamored with the writing or the instrumental palettes, especially on the sort of plain, sort of dreamy closer crystal clear. As far as Haley's lyricism is concerned, I can't really speak ill of it. I think a lot of the writing she delivers on this record is poetic, personal, and detailed. Uh, really the quality level that we have come to expect from her over the years. But still, the songs, the instrumentals, and the overall flow of this record really severely could have used some work. Because the more I listen to this thing, the more it just feels like a project that doesn't know where it wants to go, what it wants to be. It tries a bunch of different stuff, and as a result, I, I feel like it's just kind of okay at all that stuff. It doesn't really master much of anything. For sure, there are some good foundational elements to this album, and Haley is undoubtedly a very talented singer and artist, but uh, when she comes through with another project under her own name, I would hope that uh, uh, we get a record that has a bit more focus and adventure to it. Also, just a sound that seems specific to her. Overall, I'm pretty indifferent toward this one, sadly, uh, despite having enjoyed the last Paramore record so much and, and not wanting uh, this to have fallen as flat for me as it did, but uh, I'm feeling a, a decent two strong five on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Haley Williams, forever.